Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. It's good to have you join me today as we look into the Word of God. But let's pray from Isaiah 65 verse 23. You know what the Bible says there? It says you will not walk in vain, neither will your children be doomed to misfortune. The Bible says that your children will be blessed so let's pray. Father, thank you. You are wonderful, God. Thank you for your promises in the word. And Lord, I pray as your people go out of function today, Lord, that every single effort they put in will be rewarded by you in the name of Jesus. Bless the works of their hands, Lord. And I ask that the children of these ones, oh God, will not be doomed to destruction. Rather, they'll be blessed from one season to the next in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you read the Bible from the Old to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, you will notice that there is one common denominator running throughout the entire Bible. You will not see a chapter without a direct or indirect mention of this particular thing. And what is that? It is the ministry of angels. Actually, they are the force behind the acts of the apostles they are the force behind the demonstration of the power of god you see in the life of anyone that actually walked very closely with god in the scripture many of the things you see happening in the bible is actually a display of the ministry of angels like i said if you look at the acts of apostles all those great and amazing things happening you will see that the angels were behind the scene making all of this possible for instance if you look at acts chapter 5 verse 17 to 20 you will see that that the angels were used by God to respond to the cry of God's people that were trapped in jail. So the Bible says in verse 17 that the high priest and his officials who were Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night opened the gates of the jail and brought them out then he told them go to the temple and give the people the message of this life so the apostles were in jail they were trapped in jail and the bible says that because they cried out in prayer an angel of the lord came at night and they were loose from their bondage they were loose from being in prison you will see angels also bringing direction to god's people for instance in acts chapter 8 the bible tells us an angel of the lord appeared to philip that will be in your verse 26 and says to philip go down to the south road or you know if you're going from jerusalem to gaza he said if he goes out there he was going to you know come to the next point of his ministry and that next point was the minister to the ethiopian enoch actually that was the ethiopian enoch got saved because philip preached to him and that ethiopian enoch was the one if you look at church history was the one that took the gospel all the way back to africa and that was how ethiopia for instance began to receive the gospel through this ethiopian enoch but how did philip know he should go there how did philip know that this was the next phase of his assignment the bible says an angel of the lord appeared to him and told him what to do now throughout the scripture you keep on seeing angels doing all kinds of of amazing things in the life of God's people. All the miracles and all of that, you see them carrying out, you know, activities. Why is it that the ministry of angels is so prevalent in the Acts of Apostles? The answer is because the ministry of angels is our inheritance as God's children. This is what we gain by becoming born again or becoming the, a child of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, it says, Therefore, angels are only ministering spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So when you inherit salvation, you automatically have the activities of of the ministry of angels working in your life they are the partners of the church so the sin side of god's army is the people you can see you and i pastors preachers the ushers all of god's children they are the visible side of god's fighting army but then the invisible side of god's fighting army these are angels now if you read the bible in the old testament you will notice that the children of israel will constantly fight with foreign nations will fight with the edomites will fight with the philistines and all of that one of the things you need to recognize that it's not just that the Israelites are fighting with the Edomites. It is actually altar versus altar. Let me put it in another way. It is 
actually God versus God. So what that means is that the God of Israel was fighting behind the scene against the gods of the Philistines. And how does God fight? God do not leave heaven and come down because Moses has a battle against the Philistines. What he will do is he will send his angels. Let's take a look at the scripture. Exodus 12, 12 says, On that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and every firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt for I am the Lord. So God was talking to Moses and he says, you know what, this particular night, I'm going to go through the land and everything that is called a firstborn, I'm going to strike them down. But did you notice what God said? God said, I'm going to execute judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. So what was really going on is a battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. So God, of course, using his angels to go fighting against demonic powers. So in the physical, you see Israel fighting against Egypt, but in the spiritual, actually, is the altar of God versus the altar of the kingdom of darkness. So that is why God deploys angels to walk behind the scene. If you see God's people safe from, from any accident, it is the ministry of angels. They go into operation and they deliver God's people. So just like in the physical, when Israel and the Philistines were fighting, you won't really see the angels. You only see human beings fighting, but something was going on behind the scene. That is exactly how it is when God children are walking about you see them but what you do not see is the ministry of angels walking behind the scene helping them preserving them protecting them let's look at something in the bible Genesis 48, 15 to 16 says, Then he blessed Joseph and said, This is Jacob blessing Joseph. The Bible says, Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, and the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they preserve my name and the names of Abraham and Isaac and made their descendants multiply greatly throughout the earth. So what Jacob was saying is that there's an angel that redeemed him, that God sent to redeem him from harm. He said there's this particular angel that walked with Jacob throughout and that is why Jacob was redeemed from harm. No wonder the Bible tells us in Psalm 34 verse 7 that the angel of the Lord is a God. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. He again puts it this way. He said the angel of the Lord encampeth around all those that fear him. So if you fear the Lord, if you are his child, understand that you have access to the ministry of angels. You may not be able to see them with your physical eyes, but they are the ones that are deployed whenever there is danger, whenever you know you need something done. For instance, angels do all sorts of things behind the scenes. So the big question is, how do I get angels to work on my behalf? Well, the way to get them to work on your behalf is to pray. Whenever you pray, in response, God releases angels to go. If you pray about something, God do not leave his throne and come down to your house just because, you know, you want an answer to prayer. What he usually does in response that he sends his angels and they go and carry out all sorts of activities. Why does God send this? He sends them because this is our inheritance in Christ. Whenever you are in crisis, whenever there is a problem, learn to ask the Lord, send your angels to go into operation. Are you in a tight corner? Are you perhaps looking for something? Do you know that the angels know exactly where it is? And if you talk to God, he can let them bring out that thing you're looking for so that they can see it. They do all sorts of incredible things. So if you do a study of the Bible, you see all the things that angels do and we have access to it. Sometimes they strengthen people. You know, you see that in Acts 27, 23, that an angel of the Lord stood by Paul and brought strength. He strengthened him. Even Elijah, when he was discouraged, the Bible tells us that an angel of the Lord, he came, stood by him, encouraged him, gave him cake to eat and told him to, you know, to eat because the journey ahead is still fine. In other words, God sent the angels to strengthen his servants when they are discouraged or they are weary on this side of life. Isn't it amazing that we have the ministry of angels? That's because it is one of our rights and privileges and inheritance in Christ. Christ. So why don't you just thank the Lord? Thank you that I'm your child. Thank you for the ministry of angels. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, 
can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik Alpha. Listen for your voice You refresh my soul, my spirit I yield myself to you This is where I want to be In your presence, oh God I lose myself, so run out.